Alrighty, welcome back. I'm your man, Bad Chad, and Queen Jolene's on the camera. Uh, today, we're going to frame the doors for the to toolboxes. Uh, both toolboxes have been uh, pulled out. Uh, we've thrown some rock guard on the inside of each toolbox because we're not going to be able to get in there once you get them toolboxes in there. Toolboxes are both laying outside here. Uh, I've got a little bit of rock guard on the outside of them to give them some kind of material on top of it from flash rusting too fast or flash rusting at all. I left the metal on the front of it because that's where we're going to be welding and uh, that's that's the basis of it. I seen or I heard there was a comment about what about underneath there. Well, it'll probably flash rust on the inside of that. If you've ever cut a car apart, that's what is going on. There usually a flash rust inside. It doesn't rust out. It'll flash rust something like that, but it never generally goes further than that unless there's something to cause it to rust out like water, dirt, moisture. But any car, like if I cut that Plymouth apart right at the present moment, cut the quarter panels off it, it would have flash rust inside. Not that it does anything to the car, but you have to realize there's metal over top of metal on cars that are built. Uh, w if I pull the inner construction out of the hood, um, there would be flash rust underneath the hood where the inner construction is. That's just the basics of it. There's no car built that has everything coated from head to toe inside and out or they would not rust at all. So what I'm trying to say is um, that's just the basic thing that you have to get over if you feel like something should be inside there. Or what happens is you come in on the inside you drill a hole or drill a hole from the bottom side and you undercoat it and then put a plug in it. Um, that's basically what you can do for that. Um, for something like this, I'm just trying to be um, proactive and put something inside there, black that all out and cover it up and get it looking good before I put the toolbox in there because it's going to be hard to really get something up in there uh, to have something material on it. Uh, the bottom pieces of this truck here was, was uh, uh, galvanized, so that's fine. But up top where we put their steel in, that would not be fine. I have just rock aired this for now. I've just rock aired it. It's a nice looking material. Rock aired got a bad name, I think, because probably a lot of people have rock aired things that probably weren't fixed properly. But to me, I, I, I love the rock aired because I like the texture of it. It's a lot, it's finer now, and I like it because it blacks it out and gives it a satin look, and then it really does hide to the eye what something does look like and if you go underneath the car like it's like we rode to see Jimbo the other day he's got his Ozenbeel all painted looks looks awesome you know for what he's done to it but just as soon as he blacks that wheel well out uh, with rock guard or anything like that it's going to look Eve twice as good as it does at the present moment with a little bit of blue paint in there a little bit of whatever white paint and when he blacks that out with the rock guard or whatever he's going to do it with it'll look absolutely awesome um, and to me, if you have a red car, blue car, white car, yellow car, silver car, if this wheel well is painted nice that color, and then right next to it you got it blacked out, it looks twice as good. So if anybody has a car that you can see paint inside the wheel well, throw a little bit of tape up there, black that wheel well out, and your car will look ten times better, guaranteed. On, so I explained I guess what I'm doing on this video, we're going to frame up the door work. I have to thank uh, John Shepard for bringing some hinges, he even brought some piano hinges and uh, that's awesome, thank you very much, appreciate it. There's a lot of good people in the world, that's for sure, yeah, there is. Um, I'm going to put the piece on the bottom first here because I'm going to continue this on. We've got the bumper running along here, we've got the wheel lip running along here like this, we've got the wheel lip running along in the back. I want to connect them and uh, basically what's going to happen is I'll probably end up going to put in a bumper in the back so we'll see what goes on. So bear with me, we're going to put that piece on first and then we'll frame up some doors. Jolene looks amazing today as always, always. I'm going to get a little couple burrs down this end where she's been cut off and, and not looking so good, something nice and sharp to cut myself on. I'm going to put a little angle on it right now, seeing where I'm going to have to angle that way, I'm going to guess. Yeah. 
what I do there now. I kind of didn't know if I did myself any good or not. Now, I've got a marker. No, I have not. Right there it is. So we're gonna put that piece on the bottom. I've got to turn, have I got to turn the right way for the angle, sweetheart? That works. That works, she says, boys, that works. So I'm gonna guess. To watch it might be hot. Is it up there nice? Yeah. Good. I love my baby. That's for sure. Okay. There we go. Thank you, sweetie. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Let's cut this end off. No, you have to do anything. Clamp that on. We'll put that on. Hold that piece of metal tight at the bottom. That gives a nice. That just makes it look a little bit better. Gives a little bit of dimension, I guess. I'm hoping that these clamps fit right away because they clip flipped and fit in the front. And I'm hoping that they fit now. So in the bottom of this. Stock all the way around. It's one inch square stock, a sheet of metal, and then a three quarter inch piece of square stock. That's um, quite a good size chunk of metal. It really is. To me, it is. Just make sure it's flush all the way along there. Looks good, feels good. Doesn't look as good as Jolene, but it's good. That's good. Awesome. I'm gonna get another clamp because I want it tight everywhere. I want to make sure that it's flush all the way along the bottom, just so it looks nice and right and tight. Stop it. Them pair of clamps I had a problem with yesterday. You dirty buggers. Get a little tighter. I want to make sure it's... There. Let's go. We'll tack weld that on. Thanks for coming back, everybody. We appreciate it. And when I say every day live content it means every day we film and then we place it on YouTube so to say it live is half the truth I guess isn't it live is right at the present second but yesterday's video was made yesterday and played yesterday um, it's it's YouTube does not work that way and we have to load it and then play it but if you want to know our videos are w uncut one take so Jolene turns the camera on I turn into Steve Harvey welcome back I'm your man bad Chad and Queen Jolene's on the camera and then then we we just go for it so um, I consider it live because that's how I do it every day is live once in a while we will get ahead if we have to and uh, if we have to, that's what we do. We only do what we have to. It's gorgeous, gorgeous, I say gorgeous. Put one up here. I'm gonna knock that down a little bit because it's not fitting that just where I want it to fit.
And then I'm gonna run along the bottom and make it look real good. So everything we've done on this side is going to have to be done to the other side of the truck, if, if you understand. Like it's basically just going to be done over again. What we've done here, we just got to do to the other side. To the other side. Just going to go every inch, tack this along, make it look right. which I'm thinking to make it very strong. Got my native clip later on today, so I don't smell strong. It's always nice to have that welder set up nice so you can run along like that. Sometimes when you get welding underneath the, the car or truck or something like that, they don't work the greatest. If it doesn't, if it doesn't bite in real good, turn that wire speed up, get some more heat rolling. She's working good right at the present moment. She's working good. Trying to keep the gap about the same distance all the way along, just so it looks good. It's funny how certain things that you get, like people give you, it's like this, this uh, Tim Hortons sign, just an old sign made of a sign board, but how I'm using it to uh, perform what I'm doing, laying it on the floor and use it as something to lay on, which is doing a fantastic job, but it's funny the certain things that you get for the jobs that you need to have done that you use. And uh, this Tim Hortons sign board, Tim Horton's signboard is awesome for laying on. Alrighty. We've got our... I'm going to tack it on the top too. I'm going to start back at the front. I'm going to tack it on the top because I don't want it to roll out on me. I don't think it will, but I don't think it will. We'll just do it quickly.
There. Let's make some door. Let's make some some doors for the openings. Now, I am not going to take a measuring tape and make door openings. Not a chance. And the reason being is, I think if I make them on the floor with the measuring tape, that I'm not going to have much luck. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to make them right in the hole so they have no choice but to fit. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'd rather do it that way, and the reason being is, as I know they're going to fit. It was like when we made the toolboxes for the truck, Jolene said, next time, <coughs> next time, why don't you make a pattern of the opening? So, next time, we're going to lay a piece of Bristol board over top of that, or the Tim Horton signboard, whatever. We'll lay it right over top of the hole. We'll go on the back side and we'll trace it out. And we'll know exactly what the piece has to be to fit the hole. No measuring, no nothing. And then I can bend up the pieces and make sure they fit the edge of this square piece that we're sliding in. That way there, I am not wrestling with it or fighting with it. I know it's going to fit. And uh, basically, I think that's probably the easiest way to do it. And the reason being is I know it's going to fit. And that's, and that's the thing. Um, when you start getting boxes like that and you're trying to square them up center to center, you, how much time can you spend messing with it to try to get it centered or get it square or, or get the measuring tape, hold the measuring tape, like, make a pattern, make your bends fit your square box that you've got, slide it in because you know it fits. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut off pieces of this angle iron. I'm going to, let's do it. Let's do it. Look at that now, would you? And I used all the zip cut. Every bit of it. Not need enough to grind with now. So I'm just gonna take and put, I'm gonna clean that edges off a little bit. There's a little zip cut right here I'm gonna use. Nope, I'm gonna put a new one on. Right way there, I have to change it again. So we got four pieces of, uh, I think it's probably inch, I'm not sure, inch and a half, maybe inch and a half maybe inch and I'm not sure what size it is but it's I would say 3 16 thick what I mean by thick is is this this way is that thick that way obviously I think you yeah that's what it is
I am wanting, I took that off because I want to get a true read um, when I put my square stock on that. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to stick my, stick my angle iron. I'm going to stick it in here like this. I'm going to stick it right in there like that. And I'm going to weld that there. I'm going to weld four corners on it. Boom. One up here like so. Probably gonna have to grind them welds up there a little bit better in each corner. I'm probably gonna have to do that. I've got a zip cut on to to do that. So uh, let's let's grind them back and then we'll get them set in there. Some weld in the corner I might just take the end off or the corner off this take it off a little bit so when it sits in there it sits in there a little bit better I'm thinking I want to get the best read I can see that's the weld is out there a little bit so I'm going to take bum, bum, bum. I'm gonna put a flapper wheel on it's got not much on it at all hmm the other grinder is it right around here somewhere? Wasn't counting on this, but... but, but, but it's the other grinder, I need it. I need it. Can't see it right there. There it is, right there. That's ah, got a hard disk on it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. A little hard disk that is. <laughs> you got a bigger one right where? This will do. Work with what you got. Sometimes you haven't got exactly what you need, so just work with it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this little disk. That's just to allow for the weld that's sitting in the corner. That's all that's for, grinding that edge off. Just so I can get it in tighter. Turn the welder on, let's tack them in the corner. See what we can get rocking and rolling here. Now, the hinge that I have going in here, I'm gonna grab a hinge right with you. Uh, yeah, so these are the hinges that were brought to me, and they are pr approximately, approximately. So I can cut them off at any point I want to. Hinge, hinge, just like anything else. They're approximately, they're, they're close to 3 16 for the gap that's gotta go in there. I gotta have quite a gap to get them in there. And that's fine, I want, I want the same gap all the way around. If I do not have enough gap with the piece I'm putting in the corner, I'll take some metal off the square stock that I'm, I'm putting in there, like I'll, I'll actually set that in there a little bit, and cut a little piece out and set that in there a little bit, if that's the case. Um, I'm hoping it's not the case, but 
I'm hoping that I can just put these in there, make a square, um, a square door, and then put the hinges in and set it in. That's what I'm hoping. But we'll see. We'll see as I progress in making the door. That's what we'll see. So I'm just going to tack this in there best I can for. Yeah, I'm going to tack that on there so I can get it off. I'm not going to tack it on so it hits my square stock. You know what I mean? I don't want to hit my square stock, but I got it tacked in there. See, I've got more gap on the back there than I do on. See how that's tight down there? How that's away there on that one? Hmm. Watch your eyes. And that's what I'll do when I go to get it off. I'll just knock off each little tab of weld, and then I'll, I will proceed to knock them off. I'm going to pick this up just a little tiny bit. There we go. There we get a little distance on that one, a little distance on that one. We'll see what happens. Let's put one in here. Need a hammer. Had one. I got another one. Just wanna. Beautiful. That's all I want it. I'm just making one door. One door is going to swing out this way. One door is going to swing out this way. If you start doing two doors, four hinges, two doors, it just it just doubles the work. And I'm and uh, I only need one door for each toolbox. That's what I'm thinking. One door for per toolbox. Now I got a little bit of weld on top of that, gonna knock it off. Good. Square stock. Let's mark it. Which end did I mark that on? Come on, Chetty. A little tight. Do it again. Gorgeous. I'm going to bring that out to the face. Well, I guess it, yes, I have to bring it out the same distance all the way around so when it goes on there nice, we'll bring it out to the face of the metal or leave it in just a little bit maybe. Just a little bit. Because i got to face this with metal yet, so i got to leave a, an 18th. I'm just going to do this.
Now you have to remember, I still got my toolbox I got to shove inside here, so there's, there's quite a gap there, but I still got to shove that toolbox in there and put that metal in there, so um, I, think we're, I think we're doing fine. Just want to get it. And I can beat it around some after it's made, obviously, but I don't really want to beat it around too much. We'll go there. Easy access to snip it back off. Let's do another one. See if I can't make this a one cut pony. See what happens. One cut pony, I love it. We'll bring that out so we think it's good. Just a light little tack is all we need. Not giving up on that piece. We'll save it for something else, that's for sure. With a gap there that's wonderful. Gap is penetration. Just flushing it off so it feels good on both sides of the metal. Good. Awesome. Flush it out here. It's good. It's good. One tack, you can still move it. Two tacks is done. Yeah, it's not a, not a real good tack. It puts pressure on it to put it over there. I can, but I'm afraid when I undo it, it might. Could have made that work. Yes, I could have. But in all honesty, um, I didn't want to have any pressure on the door when I'm putting it together. Like when I put it together, I want it to stay square as possible. Now that's better. Now I don't have to really. Now I have a fantastic door that fits the hole. I'm just gonna weld this here for
So, hmm. I want one in the center. Got a little bit of a 45 there. I could throw a piece in there, I suppose. I've got cut right there, look. Throw that in there. Probably gonna have a piece in the center or somewhere along the center. So when I sheathe it, uh, it's not just one flappy piece of metal. At least I'd have a piece in the center to keep it. And I'll probably do that after I pull it out. I don't think it's going anywhere right this present second. Um, so basically that's what I'm gonna do to make the doors. I got time to make the other one? Or just, what? Alrighty, this is what's going on. I had a, a, a man in today, um, he was talking about you know, he was talking about, he, he, he did his push-ups this morning. He was, he was staying in town. He did his push-up this morning. I kept thinking, yeah, man, I used to do my push I'm going to give you 50 push-ups today. And the reason being is because I haven't done it in a while. And I feel like I want to do some push-ups. So I'm going to do 50 push-ups. And then uh, we'll go from there. Alrighty, um, I got some news uh, yesterday, spotted well, must took off. I got some news yesterday that Colton, my son, uh, was in a motorcycle accident. And it wasn't a good accident, from what I understand. Um, he's having issues with his leg, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if he's going to lose it or not. Um, it concerns me. <laughs> it concerns me. So um, me and Jolene are, are probably going to hit uh, an airplane ride and go see him. He's in Ontario right now in ICU. Uh, he's made some posts, and that's how I know that, that, know that it happened. So if you are a friend of Colton's, acquaintance or a fan send out a little prayer give him a message um, he's in Ontario um, he has no family there or whatever he has a girlfriend I guess but um, send him a message wish him some luck yeah it's devastating when um, someone that you love or family member is going through something like that uh, so that's all I'm going to say he's going through a hard time right at the present moment send him a message send him a wish or a prayer thank you very much for coming back like subscribe comment and get well Colton